Hello everyone. Welcome to Engineered Learnings. Engineered Learnings has been created as an effort to help and reach out to all the engineering students, aspirants and professionals out there with the basic understanding and the crux of the topics important for placements, vivas, semesters, competitive examinations and all types of interviews. So let's go to today's topic. Welcome everyone. Today we are going to study about fluidized catalytic cracking or FCC, popularly known as FCC. This was a question that was asked to me in the Honeywell UOP interview as well. So it's a very important question for the placement season. The exact walking or the mechanism or the detailed mechanism is very difficult to answer though, but we will discuss the major uh, equipments that are associated with the process. So uh, talking of an FCC unit, FCC is basically being used to convert high boiling, high molecular weight hydrocarbons to useful hydrocarbons like C5, C6, heavy naphtha, C13 to C18 that is kerosene or ATF so it is lower cuts initially cracking was practiced with uh, some uh, cracking was practiced with some uh, age old techniques and some conventional methods like thermal cracking hydro cracking later the use of catalysts to break this high boiling, high molecular weight carbons, hydrocarbons into smaller cuts came into action. And one of the prolific methods of crack cracking that is followed in industry for high boiling and high molecular weight hydrocarbons whose, molecule, whose, whose boiling point goes as high as 380 degrees Celsius and more is used, is cracked basically by using FCCs to result in lower cuts by cracking. So what happens is, in an FCC unit, the oil, that is heavy oil, is preheated to 315 to 430 degrees Celsius and pumped after mixing it with a slurry, we will come to that, where does the slurry come from, is pumped to a catalytic riser, wherein the catalysts are fed in. And those catalysts are heated at very high temperatures. Now, those catalysts having such high and hot ambience, as soon as my oil, the oil, comes in contact with those catalysts, comes in contact with those catalysts, it straight away starts for me vapors and cracked products. Vapors first forms vapors, then undergoes cracking to form cracked products in the riser itself. It's a rising section. The vapor formed and the cracked products also in forms of vapor will let the catalyst float boning it and carrying it to the top. Therein will come a reactor. The reactor embeds a cyclone separator. In fact, series of them two, generally two cyclone separators in series are used. And what is the work of that cyclone separator? The cyclone separator's work is to separate the cracked products from the catalyst. The spent catalyst is dropped down and the cracked products, the vapors, if some raw materials remain in vapor form, is transferred to a distillation unit.
wherein distillation takes place and from the top C1 to C4 is taken out side product C5, C6 heavy naphtha, kerosene and finally the heavy product the slurry is obtained this slurry is nothing but some amount of uh, unreacted oil or heavy products that remain this slurry comes back and gets mixed with the feedstock being preheated and then pumped preheated and then pumped preheater preheated and then pumped into the catalytic riser wherein the reaction takes place with the catalysts now if we see the reactor closely it basically embeds into itself a cyclone separator wherein the feed is cracked product along with some catalysts wherein the spent catalyst falls down due to its heavy weight being a solid and the vapors escape out to enter another cyclone separator wherein further separation of the spent catalyst is taking place and finally a refined product is going into the distillation column which contains the cracked products mainly and some amount of unreacted oil as well in vapor form now why is this catalyst spent because we know whenever cracking will occur a low weight carbon c5 c6 will be formed and a high weight carbon around c40 c30 something like this will be formed whenever there is a high weight carbon formed that high weight carbon or deposit carbon settles around that catalyst blocking the catalyst pores does the catalyst no longer remains activated and it becomes deactivated by carbon which has been formed due to cracking so all these catalysts are surrounded by layers of carbon so this has to be removed by some means thus what happens is this spent catalyst is taken forward to a regenerator regenerator regenerating unit steam stripped a steam supply is kept that carries forward the catalyst along with it in the regenerator what happens in the regenerator a high temperature around 1200 degrees celsius is maintained 1200 to 1300 a perfect conditions for combustion and air is sent in that means oxygen is sent in which burns off the carbon surrounding the catalyst reactivating the catalysts and hence transferring the catalyst back to the riser now you see the flue gases come out as CO2, CO, this CO2, CO, CO goes to the CO boiler, wherein it is burned off to CO2 to generate further energy. And this energy is finally recovered by using a waste heat boiler a waste heat boiler which is supplying heat to the compressor which is pumping in the air here. so you see the entire system is balanced we do not need to give any electricity from outside the entire system is balanced now what happens is this flue gas gives energy to waste heat boiler wherein uh, it is giving energy to the pump for the air to be compressed and sent in also since the temperature is so high, the reactivated catalyst will get heated, get heated a lot and hence will be carried forward to this riser at a very, very high temperature, as we have already said, which promotes cracking. In the beginning, I said the catalysts are under very hot conditions. Why the catalyst is under hot conditions? Because that heat is supplied by the regenerator itself. So it is a heat balanced process. You do not need to supply outside heat from outside to promote thermal cracking. Or thermocatalytic cracking the catalyst itself is carrying heat when it is regenerated the itself is carrying some heat from the flue chamber which is at 1200 degrees celsius and that heat is sufficient to promote cracking in this section so this is the entire process some basic units the riser very important question the reaction takes place in the riser and not the reactor the, as soon as it comes in contact with the catalyst 
it takes place in the riser the reactor holds the cyclone separators it's a holding tank containing the cyclone separators to separate the spent catalyst the spent catalyst is then steam stripped and sent to the regenerator wherein oxygen is deliberately fed to remove the deposits of carbon on the pores of the catalyst the cracked products refined is then sent to the distillation column wherein the different cuts are separated and the slurry being recycled back with the heavy oil moreover the co2 after extracting the energy from the co2 and co uh, this flue gas is further sent to the electrostatic precipitator to separate any catalyst fines that may have inutriated along with the carbon may have some flue gas carrying some catalyst fines those catalyst fines has to be removed before releasing the co2 to the atmosphere to recover the catalyst and also to prevent the catalyst to be sent to the environment thus it is an entire process which is a heat balance process and its main units being riser reactor and regenerator and other units being distillation column uh, cyclone separators uh, waste heat boiler compressor electrostatic pressure so that's it for today uh, this is fluid catalytic cracking which is very commonly asked in the interview uh, if you like the video press a like subscribe to our page comment share our work and help us reach a greater audience thank you